In this session we're going to take a look at renaming files. Make sure that you use change directory so your current working directory is the root of the MO3 L09 working copy. Taking a quick directory listing of this directory reveals that we have a file called renameme.txt and equally important that there is no file called newname.txt. In this first example, we're going to use the subversion rename command. The subversion rename in this simple form takes two working copy paths. In this case, the file renameme.txt, which exists in our working copy, and newname.txt, which is the name we want to assign it. Running the rename command, you can see that subversion interprets this as two operations. First of all, the file newname.txt is added to the working copy. And secondly, the rename me.txt is deleted. In other words, subversion considers a rename command to be an addition of a new file and the deletion of the original. Looking at the status of our working copy following this operation, we can see the rename me.txt file scheduled deletion, and we can see the addition of the new name.txt, the plus character in the fourth column showing that this is an add with history. In other words, new name.txt has been added from an existing version controlled resource. Using the info command, we can see that new name.txt was copied from rename me.txt. In other words, the rename command is effectively a copy command followed by the deletion of the original file. All of this work has been carried out in the current working copy. Using the ls command, we can see what's in the current repository. Again, we're using the revision specifier to ensure that we get a report of the latest revision of the repository, not the revision to which the current working copy is synchronized. And we can see that in the repository, the rename me.txt file still exists, which is precisely what we would expect given that none of the commands we've issued so far have any effect on the repository. Committing the rename to the repository, we see that the two operations, one adding with history and the other deleting the original file, are actioned against the repository. Looking once again at our working copy directory, we can see that the new name.txt file is in place and the rename me.txt file is gone. And similarly, now listing the files in the head of the repository corresponding to our working copy, we see a similar situation. The new name.txt file exists and the rename me.txt file we had originally has been deleted. Looking at the history of the new name.txt file using the log command, we can see the addition with history the first line in the revision 27 report, and the deletion of rename me.txt, the second line in revision 27. Because the trunk new name.txt file was derived from the trunk rename me.txt file during the rename operation, the log command traces the history through the rename operation. Again, remember that in the from information, the revision number, in this case 26, refers to the revision to which the rename me.txt file was updated at the time that the copy was done, not the revision in which the rename me.txt file was last changed. Looking down the log output, we can see that the rename me.txt file was actually last modified in revision 1. Revision 1 shows that rename me.txt was added during this revision. The astute amongst you will have noticed that the rename operation is effectively a combination of the subversion copy command and a subversion delete command. The effect is absolutely identical, and we'll look at this process in more detail a little later.